Mina, Kon Bunwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Alright, gonna go through some more judges, and this time, I have a full half hour, maybe a bit less. I've got my timer going, I've got, getting good at that. And, um, I just want to lay out a lot of the thoughts that, um, I wanted to put out. Like yesterday, I don't think the video was horrible or bad, but it, I feel like the point was a little bit unclear. And it was a little bit misdirected because there was so much that needed to be addressed. There were so many things I saw in Judges chapter 20. So I'm just going to take a little bit of time today because it's Sunday and I can do that. Okay, I could do it any day of the week. But Sunday is the day when it's like, okay, let's do a full-blown sermon. Whereas the rest of the week it's just something a little bit, a little bit easier, a little bit softer. Um, a lot less of a time commitment to watch. Whereas on Sunday, it's kind of like another sermon. I'm, yeah, maybe like a, well, no, it's not a podcast at all. It's just simply done on YouTube. Anyway, I want to cover Judges chapter 20 thoroughly. So, in verse 1, I mentioned yesterday, like, Dan and Beersheba would be like the equivalent of California to Virginia or Hawaii to Virginia. The entirety of Israel was brought together by this Levite who cut up his concubine into 12 pieces and sent those 12 pieces to each tribe of Israel. Now, the first thought is, that's disgusting. That's gross. Why would you do that? Isn't that dishonoring her memory? On the contrary, he wanted to make sure something was done about what had happened to her. So he did something so outrageous and ridiculous that he made sure to get everyone's attention. And yeah, when everyone got one body part, and he, I'm guessing, and I, this is, it is outside of the biblical text, but I think it makes sense. If he sent, he probably sent one body part to like the top leader or like the top leader's household. Pretty sure things were done in households back then. Like here, are the, like the households who have the authority, the influence, the money, the livestock, etc. Send a body part to like one household, like a, probably the biggest household in each tribe of Judah and Israel. That was a reference from the kings when the um, kingdom was split um, when it became Israel and Judah. All twelve tribes of Israel. All the children of Israel and all their houses, all the main houses, each one got a body part sent. And so they probably talked with each other on a regular occasion because they were still not quite a confederacy. Um, I forget the exact term for what their type of government was. Not just a theocracy um, with God in control, but the way all 12 were autonomous states, yet they kind of banded together if they needed to. Um, a confederacy is probably not the right word. I apologize for that. I don't know what that word is. Google is your friend. So he did something radical, got all their attention. So they're like, okay, what's going on here? And he tells them the story that we read back in chapter 19. The first issue that I want to address is how things that are famous get so much attention. Um, this is one week since um, the Orlando shooting and... Um, and when Christine Grimmie was also shot and killed, also in Orlando, Florida. And that, just reading this chapter, considering what happened last week, it's impossible for my mind not to draw parallels between what I'm reading here when Israel was in a really dark spot, something really horrible had happened, and what just happened in my nation, the United States. It's really impossible for me to not make any parallels there. So since I'll probably be referring to both the Orlando shooting and Christina Grimmie a lot, this particular sermon will not be monetized. I normally, last week, that wasn't, the, the shooting wasn't the main point. It, it was like, it was just part of what led to the sermon of be ready when you die to stand before Jesus. You know, we're all going to die and we don't know when it's going to be. We don't know when some psychopath is going to come along the way. So that was the main point. I didn't feel, I felt okay monetizing that video and it is still monetized up to this day when I've recorded this video. This video is going to tie in, I think, on several points to the Orlando shooting and to Christina Grimmie. So this particular sermon, because the tie-ins are going to be so strong, therefore this sermon will not be monetized. And again, that's just kind of a disclaimer out there at the beginning. What I believe is just, what I believe is fair and the correct thing to do. When famous people get, get shot or get cancer, or heck, even have a baby. All the media f f just floods your, um, you know, whether it's your uh, Gmail account, your Yahoo account, um, you know, the front page of some tabloid or People magazine, 
you just get bombarded with, oh, this person's pregnant, or oh, this person has beef with this person. I like YouTube and some of the drama that's going on there. Actually, there's some dramas going on right now between Drama Alert, Leafy is Here, Pyrocynical, all that stuff. I keep track of, of the news on YouTube. And I won't be going into that subject just to cover it briefly. I have no problem with whatever drama you want to cover, whatever news you want to cover as long as it's accurate. Um, if I don't think it's worth my time, I'll click out of the video. And if I think it's untrue or misleading, I'll click the dislike button. I don't think it needs to be necessarily banned from YouTube. Uh, you wanna make news, you wanna make your content, do whatever you want, it's your channel. And if I don't like it, there are other channels I can watch. Like PewDiePie, Markiplier, and Jacksepticeye, my fellow gamers. When, famous, when something happens to famous people though, we all hear about it, we all know about it. And I've seen some people talk about, again, YouTube is where I spend a lot of my time, especially since I've taken up residence here amongst my fellow YouTubers. No matter how small I am, I'm still one of you, and I do this on a regular basis at the moment. And I like to do it for quite a while. But so I see these comments, and so many issues are brought up when something horrible, like the Orlando shootings, happen. And one of the things that I've seen is, you know, why do famous people get all the attention? Um, well, actually, that was more along the lines of Christina Grimmy. Why did she get so much attention? What about, you know, the normal people who are shot and killed? What about, you know, just like people in the Middle East or people in Africa or people over in Asia? You know, tsunamis, hurricanes, um, tornadoes, earthquakes, famines, disease. The list goes on for quite a long time. Why don't we talk more about those things? Why don't those things get our attention? Why don't we care more? And I totally stick by what I said yesterday. Justice for all, that's the goal. That's what we want to do. That's what should be done. We need, you know, I'm glad that in the United States we have an organized government and an organized justice system to where, like when someone small and quote unquote unimportant dies because Jesus died for all of us. Not a single human being is without importance. Each of us is worth the blood of God. Let that sink in. So I'm glad we have a criminal justice system over here. It's far from perfect, plenty of corruption, but justice is served in several instances. And a lot of the people that I know that are cops or aspiring cops, like my friend Robbie who plays Dark Souls with me, they're good and respectable people. Yes, even the non-Christians. They're good and respectable people and they want to serve this world. They want to do good by people. They want to make the world a better place. Now that doesn't get you into heaven, but my gosh, I'll certainly take that over someone who's just, you know, being a complete idiot and hurting the people around them. Much less people who are who are hurting people like to the extreme, like torture and killing and horrible things like that. But there's really no avoiding famous people being in the spotlight. They're already in the spotlight. When something small happens to them, like when they insult another star, it gets thrown about in the papers. I don't have any objection to that. I have no problem with that because they're already famous. What did you expect would happen? If something happened to me, I have 27 subscribers. Now, I do have family and friends who would care a great deal if something happened to me. And I have a wonderful Lord who is ready with his arms wide open to take me home whenever he calls me. But let's be honest, something happened to me, uh, you guys wouldn't like break down or fall apart. I wouldn't get tribute videos. I wouldn't get a, you know, a hashtag off for Twitter, you know, rip Jesus freaking gamer. It wouldn't happen because I am not famous. I'm not well known. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with small fry like me or small fry in Africa or Asia or the Middle East dying even by the hundreds or thousands, and them not getting a huge amount of attention. They weren't famous people. And that, that may sound incredibly harsh, it may sound incredibly wrong, that's simply the nature of the way things work. The more well-known someone or something is, the more attention it gets. So when something happens to he, she, or it, then a lot of attention is focused on that thing. And if something terrible happens to he, she, or it, a lot of attention is focused there. And Christina, since Christina Grimmie had quite a bit of attention, since she had quite a bit of a following on YouTube and was getting an even larger following with The Voice and pursuing her dreams, of course, when she meets a tragic end, the news is gonna just hop all over that. 
that's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. Famous people, their lives matter just as much as the little guys. And they don't matter more, it's just that they're more well known. So whereas the media reports all the small little things that happen with them, it also reports how much more so the big things that happen to them. And that's simply the nature of this world and the way things are. For those of you who are complaining about that, that's a pointless complaint. Of course those small lives matter, no one's going to disagree with that. But the more well known someone or something is, the more it's going to be talked about. And there, that's, that's not right or wrong. And I don't think there's any ill intent, and even some scumbag reporter is hard in reporting that. That's simply the nature of the way things are. So people who are complaining about that, they need to be quiet. They need to shut up. They're not helping. Christina Grimmie's death, it's not more important than all the people who died in the rest of the world. But because of how tragic it was, there's nothing wrong with taking a moment to reflect and say, hey, you know, I've heard of this person. I like their music. This makes me sad. And paying tribute to them. There's also nothing wrong with that. Because No, there isn't going to be anyone to pay tribute for all those people who died elsewhere in much larger numbers. Only their family and their friends will mourn for them, just like their family and friends will only will mourn for me when I die unless something happens and I get famous. So... There's no point in complaining about that. I'm content with the people that know me and love me. And it's awesome that, you know, if someone does become rich or famous, it's awesome that when they're going through tough times that their fans support them. If a lot of people are looking at you, aren't you glad those people back you up and support you when something hard hits your life? You know, if something happened to PewDiePie, for example, I'd care a great deal. I like the guy. I think he's really cool. And if something happened to him that was bad, I, I would care a great deal because I feel like, and I'd probably care more about him than if something happened to some Hollywood star like Will Smith or Tom Cruise. I don't watch them on an almost daily basis. I don't feel like I know them as much as I know Felix. So if something happened to him, I'd care a lot more if, rather than something happening to some Hollywood star. And since Christina Grimmie went down a path that I want to go down, even though I never heard of her before, when I heard the story, it hit me very deeply because I want to pursue music on my YouTube career and in my personal life. I don't know to what extent. I'm nowhere near as good as she is. I have a long ways to go, but it's still something I want to pursue. It's something I want to try. So anyone who's complaining about how, about how famous people get more attention, you know, when something bad happens to them, they get more attention, period. That's not going to change. And your complaints about that, they're, it's a moot point. Famous people are going to get more attention in every aspect. So, shut up about that. And I'm glad that this Levite did what he did to make this murder, like, infamous to the leaders of the tribes of Israel. He wanted justice for his concubine. By making her famous and making the incident famous, he got justice. I can't say without a doubt that these um, Benjamites and Gibeah did something like this before, but if it did happen, it's just some random stranger who walked in, and there were a group of men who were willing to do something that low and debased, then they needed, they needed to be punished. They needed to be called out on what they did, and they needed to be put to death, since they put someone to death. And that's another thing, that, that's another topic I want to get into, capital punishment. I'm a supporter of capital punishment. I, I like the way I can cover so many more points as I have more time today. They decided we're going to kill these men. That was a good decision. Now, this is, it, this is a bit of a, another polarizing issue. I'm not going to run away from those on my videos here, on YouTube, or in, real, or in the rest of my life, real life. YouTube life is real, too. I'm really preaching this right now. When... Uh, when something like this happens, you want something done about it. And however bad the, the crime is, you want the pr punishment to be appropriate. I believe that if someone intentionally commits murder, first degree murder, they should be put to death. I am glad that the man who shot and killed Christina Grimmie is now dead. I am glad that the Orlando shooter who shot up that gay bar um, died in a gunfight with police. I am glad those two men are dead. And if they had lived, I would hope that a trial 
which obviously, you know, they're guilty of what happened. There were plenty of witnesses of what they did. I hope those men would be put to death by our legal system. And even if you don't agree with me on capital punishment, you know, that's totally fine. Not a problem at all. Um, you know, a lot of people have different opinions on that. Even people, fellow Christians, will disagree with me on that stance, and that is fine. I personally feel, I feel like more than just one thing warrants the death penalty, and I won't go into like a list today. This is, more, this is one point out of many. But when someone does something that outrageous, and they intend to kill someone else, at the very, very least, at the very least, I think we can all agree that if someone does something, that if someone does something this outrageous, just kills someone in front of everybody else, or kills multiple people, and there's there's no doubt that this person is the murderer, that there was intent to kill those people, I think most of us can probably agree at least that one crime deserves death, not life imprisonment, not some kind of beating or flogging, death. They deserve to die as they put those people to death. Some people would go so far as to say those people need to be punished and tortured a bit so they'll really suffer and have an agonizing death. Not so sure I agree with that. I'm also not so sure I completely disagree with that. The eye for an eye thing that was in the Old Testament, we don't necessarily have to obey the legal system that Israel had. In fact, I think a lot of it you know, needs to be thrown out the window. is no longer applicable since Jesus came. But the eye for an eye thing, I like that under a lot of circumstances. I think physical punishment, kind of like we were, most of us were spanked when we were kids, doing something to criminal offenders when they've hurt someone, you know, hurting them in some way, I think sometimes that is appropriate. Controversial issue, not practiced in the United States, but I believe that there would be a lot of fairness in that. And again, hopefully we can all agree that people who do something as outrageous as just openly killing someone in front of a crowd of people when they're so obviously filled with murderous intent and hatred they need to be put to death and if you disagree let me know in the comments below i'd love to start a dialogue on that i think more people will agree with me than disagree with me on that point but feel free to disagree your own person read the bible and understand it for yourself let the lord speak to your heart and show you what is right and if you're not a believer then you know you don't, have, you don't use the Bible. You use whatever common sense or whatever, um, you know, whatever faith it is that you adhere to. And I'd be happy to discuss that with you in the comments below as well. All people are welcome, Christian and non-Christian alike. And so they agreed that they would basically go against the town of Gibeah in Benjamin and repay them for the violence that they did. And then we read down... You go down a little bit. Let's go down to verse 12. I didn't really, I did, I stopped at verse 11 yesterday. Let's go down to verse 12. And wow, time is flying. Then the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What is this wickedness that has occurred among you? Now therefore deliver up the men, the perverted men, or the sons of Belial, who are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and remove the evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not listen to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. Instead, the children of Benjamin gathered together from their cities to Gibeah, to go to battle against the children of Israel. Here's another point. You don't side with people that are family or friends when they've done something that's plainly wrong. I don't, I'm pretty sure the vast majority of people would agree that what happened there in Benjamin, the brutal raping and murder of a woman by a group of men is a bad thing and is wrong. I think most people would agree with that. And the Benjamites went to Gibeah and said, we're going to help fortify this place. We're going to help defend it. You know, we're not going to let the rest of Israel tell us what to do. I'm, get, I'm, going, to, I'm going to make a bit of an assumption here, and I'm announcing it ahead of time. They did it because they were fellow Benjamites. They were blood family. They were kin. You don't support a family member, or much less a friend, but you don't support blood when they do something wrong. You call them out and you let them face whatever punishment it is that they, need to, that they need to face. Justice needs to be served. You don't side with your blood. You side with the truth. You don't side with your own personal preferences and opinions. You side with the truth. You don't do what you feel like doing. You don't do what you want to do. You side with the truth, with justice, with what is right. 
That's what you side with. That's what you should side with. And the fact that the Benjamites rallied around Gibeah to defend the murder and rape of a woman is... That is sickening. That is disgusting. If you continue reading in the chapter, they lose. They, and they actually, and strangely enough, even though all the children of Israel were pretty much doing whatever they wanted to do, they still consulted with the Lord. And apparently the Lord spoke to them in some way and told them how to attack Benjamin. And so through military strategy and through um, having a greater force than Benjamin, they defeated the Benjamites and they killed all almost all of them. If you look at the numbers in here, I'm going to try to do that very quickly. How many? 25,100 Benjamites were killed by the rest of the children of Israel. And, okay, in verse 15, and from their cities at that time, the children of Benjamin numbered 26,000 men who drew the sword besides the inhabitants of Gibeah who numbered 700 select men. So 26,700 men minus 25,100 men. Benjamin was almost completely wiped out because of this catastrophe and because they sided wrongly, because they did the wrong thing. There's another point. When you do something wrong, you're going to get called out on it. Now I'm going to, And I'm going to make a statement. This is a bit faith-based. I do believe it is very true. That saying, you reap what you sow, Paul said in the book of Galatians in the New Testament, now it's definitely true that when you stand before God in judgment, that you're going to fa that you're going to face, you know, everything that you did in life, every word you spoke, every thought you thought, every action you did, and you're going to have to answer for all of those things. But I personally believe, from what I from this particular story and from several other stories in the Bible, a lot of the reaping what you've sown happens in this life. Yes, it ultimately happens before God, but a lot of it happens in this life. You do something good in this life it's going to come back to you. You do something bad in this life, it's going to come back to you, and that's not karma. Karma is a Hinduistic and Buddhistic principle, not a biblical one. There isn't some force that magically equalizes good and evil. No. Good wins. God, my God, Jesus Christ, He wins hands down. It's, there's not some force that equalizes good and evil. There's the mighty hand of God Himself making sure that evil is punished and good is rewarded. Good wins every time, even though sometimes we don't see it. That, that is definitely a sermon for another day. There's a psalm that tackles that very topic. Um, how sometimes good suffers and evil seems to prosper. Good will win. Evil will lose. And I will also hasten to add that, the, again, the Israelites, it took something this bad to even bring them together and unite them. There's another point. This will have to be my last point for this message. I understand that it, you know, when something really bad on a massive scale happens, people are going to come together, be it a nation, a town, a family, a church, a, politi you know, a political party, or your group of friends, whatever community, like YouTube and FUPA, whatever community you're a part of, you know, when something really bad happens, you're going to band together. And there's nothing, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. When, <clears throat> when something bad happens, it's good that people will come together, stand up, united, and say, this is wrong, we don't approve of this, stop it. That's a good thing. I like when people come together in unity. The Bible speaks of unity being a very, very good thing. Of course, when evil people unite and stand up for their evil, like the Benjamites did with the, with the Gibeonites, that's bad. Just because they stood up all together and said, no, we're defending your right to rape and murder this woman because you're our brother. It's, not, it's good when people stand up together in unity for the right thing. What's good is good and what's wrong is wrong, regardless of human opinion and human circumstances. God himself defines what's right and wrong. So I like people standing up in unity, but just be, because unity is a good thing in general, but it isn't always a good thing. The majority can be wrong. And when people in a majority stand up for the wrong thing, they will eventually get punished for that. Just like the nation of Israel we've seen in Judges time and again, when the whole nation was in sin, 
and was astray from God, the entire nation was punished by some neighboring nation. God sent a neighboring nation in to conquer them and ravage them and steal from them and hurt them and kill them because they were in disobedience. So the majority doesn't make right. But as a general rule, unity is a good thing. At the same time, let's make it a personal goal. And again, there's not, it's good when people stand up, that's good, as for big causes. As far as people standing up for smaller causes, again, it's kind of the whole famous versus non-famous thing. When something's well known, more people are gonna back it up or fight it just because they've heard of it. When something small happens, you know, not as many people are going to back that up and support it or fight it just because they haven't heard of it. And nothing can really be done about that. And there's not really a decrying of, you know, why, my gosh, why aren't more people doing, you know, more um, about these smaller things. They don't know about it. There's no guilt there. There's nothing wrong with that. What I would encourage each of us to do, and this ties into what I said yesterday, justice for all. What we do know what we do have, the friends and family that, we, that are behind us, the enemies that do oppose us. Let's make sure to stand up and fight the good fight, to fight against those that we think are wrong, and to defend those that we think are right. And again, that's, and that's based not on family or blood. Thankfully, I have a family that loves me and does support me, and I do count them as good people. They have their mistakes just like I do, but for the most part, in general, I can support them in the things they do. And when they do something wrong, I call them out on it. But yeah, it's good. It's good to stand up for what you think is right, and it's good to stand up against what you think is wrong. There's nothing we can do about you know the famous things versus the non-famous things. Stand up for the things you know in your own circle of influence, in your own in your own bubble. Defend that bubble. Be on guard every day. Do what's right. Stand up for truth. And when someone you love does something wrong, you call them out on it. And when someone that's your enemy does something right, you put down your weapon and you give them a round of applause. Good job. You didn't completely mess that up. You did something right. I approve of that. We need to be humble enough to admit um, when we're in the wrong. And we need to be humble enough to receive rebuke and correction when we're the ones that are in the wrong. We need the strength to stand up and say, you're wrong even though for the most part you're good and I love you to pieces, you're still wrong in this area. And not cave in and say, well, I love you, so I'll let you get away with that now. Do what's right within your bubble. We can't, we can't make everyone and everything famous. That's not possible. But we can stand up for the things in our own bubbles and fight the things that are bad within our own bubbles. That's what we can do. So th stop crying about how famous people get more attention and how some some things that you feel are so important don't get a whole lot of attention. Stop crying about that and do what you can. Do what you can. And if you can make it famous, like the Levite did in a very grisly and grotesque way, if you can get word out about the thing you love and are passionate about, good. Try to find a way. Talk to your friends and your family and your fellow believers in Christ if you're a Christian. Heck, I would even say your fellow believers in whatever other faith you may be that are watching this video. Stand up for what you believe in. And if that leads, into a, if that leads you into an encounter with me because you think I'm wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. Come at me, bro. Let's talk about it. Let, let's argue this out. Tell me why I'm wrong. I, very, I may very well be wrong, and I may need to take a step back and say, you know what? I goofed on that. I'm sorry. And I would ask you to please also be equally respectful and humble. And if you're in the wrong, try to keep an open mind to say, hey, I was in the wrong. Maybe that Jesus you're talking about is right. And for those of you, going a little over 30 minutes here, for those of you who don't know Jesus right now, I'd like to invite you to know him. And if you don't believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me tell you right now, you're wrong. Jesus Christ is the God of the universe. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one will come to the Father except for by Him. If you're willing to believe in Him and accept Him today, tell Him that you're sorry for your sins, the things you've done wrong. Tell Him that you believe He died on the cross for you, and then He rose again. If you want a model prayer to follow, pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe you're the God of the universe, 
and I believe you came down to this world about 2,000 years ago to die for me on the cross, shedding your blood so that my sins can be forgiven, and I also believe that you rose again three days later, guaranteeing me eternal life in heaven. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for my sin, and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, awesome! You are now one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. You have joined the family of God, and heaven is now your eternal home. Make sure to find a Bible. Read it every day. Your faith and your closeness with God will grow as you do. Find other like-minded people who also believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, came in the flesh, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, shedding his blood for your sin, and rose again three days later, and that the Bible is the Word of God. Find like-minded people who can pray for you, talk to you, and encourage you, and be your friend in this new walk of faith. Then make sure you also pray to God every day. Just say, hey God, I love you. Do you know that's a prayer? Hey God, I'm having a really bad day. Would you please help me out? That's a prayer. And also, Praise Him and worship Him. Tell Him how thankful you are that He's a good God. How thankful you are that Jesus died for you. How thankful you are that He is your God now. How thankful you are that all the wrongs you've done, that God still loves you anyway. Praise Him and worship Him for that. And if I can challenge you a little bit, try to find a Christian band. There's pretty much every genre out there. Try to find a Christian band that you like so that I have nothing, I have nothing against most secular music, some, if they're singing about doing horrible things and sinful things, I oppose that as a general rule. But I don't have anything wrong against secular music just because it doesn't necessarily say the name of Jesus. But I really do like music that's Christian because it reminds me and it puts in my mind. There's something about music that just kind of stays in your mind. So I love music that reminds me of the great God that I serve. So try to find some Christian music and hook yourself up with that. You won't regret it. You'll be glad that you did. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.